Welcome back, guys, to another Anime DGEN's BS Hour. This is episode 23 coming at you live. Um, so today we have uh, another two segments. Our first is going to be our spring 2023 recap. This is going to be of our personal favorites this time. Uh, me and Dan did the recap of our actual weekly rundown last week, and then we're going to get into uh, a segment we call Teach Us, Sensei. Um, i sure this isn't going to be the last time we talk about it, but I think you guys are really going to like it. Uh, but before we get into all that, y'all y'all have some news for the people? There it is. I was about to say, I got some news for the people. Bash should uh, turn down the intro music a little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, go for it then. I doubt, I doubt you guys can hear it on the podcast, so we can just hear it in our headphones. And I'm like, this is going to get very distracting really quick when it starts <laughs> playing like copyrighted music and I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I checked after I said all that. I was like, wait a second. This don't feel right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, to start off with some news, um, so I was actually just scrolling Twitter and I saw that Zom 100 already has a live action movie coming out in August. And like we just watched the first episode of that anime on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> so they're releasing them at the same time, which I think is really interesting. But that got us looking and there are 17 live action anime adaptions in production right now. And that's nuts because like live action anime sucks. <laughs> yeah, it really does, man. Uh, and like that's 17, not including Zom. So it's 18 total in the works right now. Uh, I think we have like My Hero and Death Note and and several others. Uh, Sword on the Line, Attack on Titan, Yu Yu Hakusho, Gundam, and a bunch more. And I am afraid what they're doing to my genre right now. Yeah, I mean, the only one of those that like really seems like it could work would be Gundam because uh, it's being directed by the director behind Kong Skull Island. And like there's been some really good giant robot uh, live action movies like mm -hmm. uh, Pacific Rim is one I'm thinking of. So that might be one they can make work. It's going to be a lot of CGI in the space battles, but I'll have to say. I think that's fine. Like as long as you have enough budget to do like the mechas and the and the. um space i think you're fine um like you said we, we've seen it with things like transformers like uh, transformers like you can do good becca um but when you get into like anime powers it looks it looks a little weird after a while you know you can't do it, it they can't just get it just right and it costs like millions and millions of dollars to do so i'm so excited to see some really crappy cgi deku with like the one for all power <laughs> coursing through them oh no it's man. gonna be so bad it's gonna be terrible I think I think uh I think One Punch Man could uh do a decent job though, you know. Possibly. That's well, gonna be tough because you have like all the different like I'm not so much worried about the powers, it's like how you animate like the all the different monsters. Actual monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Well that tricky. and I feel like One Punch Man does a really good job with funny facial expressions. Like all the deadpan faces and stuff, and you can't do that. You can't do that <laughs> IRL. Like it's gonna look so stupid. And the fact that like they're gonna make them bald, but it's not gonna be like that exaggerated shiny ass head. <laughs> they're gonna have to wax that bit. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be hitting it with Pam, <laughs> Pam before every scene, get it nice and shiny. They should, dude. They should. Um, but yeah, like that. See, so the thing I like about animation is like that you can kind of like if you can imagine it, you can draw it right, and you can animate it. Uh, when you get into live action, like there's you're constricted to buy what looks fairly realistic, even though you do have CGI, like you can't do exactly what you want or exactly what the anime is. So you have to like figure out how to adapt it. And I feel like it takes away from it a lot of the times. Yeah. And I guess I am kind of excited to see an American's take on some of these shows because Death Note and Attack on Titan have already had live action um, it, movies produced by Japanese companies. And they were uh, subpar, to say the least. Did you see this? I don't know if it's a new Attack on Titan uh, live action, but Mikasu's boobs were like in a Bro, pretty tiny push-up bra, and it was fucking hilarious. I don't, awesome. know if, I don't know if that's <laughs> actually like a, um, uh, a official footage or if that's like actual like... Uh, no, no stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, the, the live action like a pizza X. delivery man no type, type shit. shit. Yeah. The live action <laughs> attack on Titan hentai is what we're talking about here. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, almost all these are probably going to flop. 
I mean, just to being completely honest, uh, I try not to even look at it like I've said multiple times on this show. I have been scarred uh, by Avatar The Last Airbender, and uh, you guys are going to have to watch it first. Well, I ain't going to lie. If if that is official, the Mikasa and Aaron thing, I, I'm watching that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yo. <laughs> I don't know. I, they could be getting better because there's some good studios behind it now. I mean, Netflix is producing a lot of them, but I saw that, like, legendary films is doing my heroes that, that that could have potential and i mean like the superhero genre is really good like all the marvel movies so like if they that's can i mean true. they don't have the budget though see they that's don't the, have that's the thing there's no marvel budget behind that but that show's super popular so it, it might get some good funding i don't know yeah we'll we'll have to see but i will not be the first person with my toes in the water Believe no that and more importantly after uh the four-week hiatus the One Piece manga is back this week. So if you're reading the manga, check uh, your Shonen Jump app on Sunday. Or if you're like me, go find some illegal rips where people do fan translations and read it before you see all the spoilers. <laughs> Bye. Because there's already spoilers <laughs> out, bro. Uh, I'm seeing them already. Oh, I don't I don't look at I don't look at the written spoilers. It's when they start putting all the pictures on. I'm like, I'm I gotta look now. No, like I haven't really seen like I I just keep on scrolling or whatever, but they mm-hmm. already got spoilers out for the next episode. So on Twitter, like they're talking about the shit. And I'm just like, bro, just wait. We, like we're we're like still six or five days away from that shit. So let my boys at TCB scans cook let and then you cook. can spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah mvps okay, you ready to uh get into our first segment definitely uh do you want me to take the little introduction of it yeah go for it brother so we are doing a spring 23 recap uh primarily we're trying to do shows that we weren't on the rundown but we do have a couple on there just because uh some of us aren't as um diverse in their weekly animes that they watch look man i'm just not that active <laughs> like that but... Damn. Damn, call out bass like that. Immediately. Bro. Like we didn't even get into What's it. Up yet. With it? <laughs> <laughs> y'all just y'all was just on vacation again. Like you should have like got oh, back at him or something, Bass. I, I'm getting back at him now for all the crap he talked about in my golf game. Dude, oh. I was I was kind of going in, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I heard it was trash. The, the, <laughs> wow. I wanna oh, see you pick shit. up some clubs, Tyler. I would I would be hitting you're, it you're like coming, uh, you're coming on the next golf trip, but the, the you know, I would be hitting like what's his name? Uh, Bowser or whatever in uh golf <laughs> army. Golf. Yeah. The, the twenty <laughs> the twenty something years of golf experience versus the one is a very big difference. It, it is, but yeah, yeah. I've never i I've only swung a golf club like uh five times, so See, and, and you know, I try to stay respectful because like, I'm not a big shit talker when it comes to golf, but Dan really brings it out of me. Um, <laughs> I think at one I'm, point I was like yelling through some bushes like that guy fucking sucks. <laughs> and I believe at me. they threw a golf ball at me at some point and I got terrified thinking the people behind me were hitting up and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Because <laughs> I'm like standing in the middle of a fairway at a ball that sucks. I'm like, am I going to die? <laughs> the old hand wave got him. <laughs> hey man you hear a ball bounce you're worried <laughs> sure but getting back to our topic here uh so there was a lot of hype for summer 2023 but in our opinion it spring 23 had some bangers you know we were all kind of worried that summer 23 was going to overshadow the hype for spring 23 um so we're going to talk about some of our favorite shows not even our favorite shows some shows that we really enjoyed for the season and um you know if you guys have any thoughts in your favorites make sure to join the discord uh we're gonna say it a million times probably time to join it little linktree.com slash anime degens hashtag it is, plug. It, it is live in there bro or hit up hit us up on twitter we're pretty active honestly yeah um, but i'll get us started with um an anime that is so underrated it fucking hurts me um, this is Vinland Saga season two. It has an 8.84 on my anime list. Um, I watched season one, like at the beginning of this year. And then as soon as season two dropped, I immediately started watching it. Uh, season one um, kind of focused on, I've introduced this before on the show, so I'm not going to do like a, a, a rundown of that again, but I, I will tell you guys, you know, season one kind of focused on the fighting and people's, you know, reasons for fighting in war, which was pretty much like either ple- pleasure, greed, protection, of their homes. Uh, some people had no reason. They just like fighting it. And some people like doing it for the glory. And in season two, we see a big change. I was expecting more 
gas ass fights. If you haven't checked out this anime, please do. Uh, you're you're doing yourself a favor. Um, but then it kind of shifts to, you know, more of the reasons. Uh, I guess more like the philosophy of our main character Thorfinn, uh, who was made a slave. I'm not going to get too much into the plot. I want you guys to go watch this. And he kind of learns what it means to be a true warrior. That's like the main theme I would say in this anime is him trying to become a true warrior. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys watch season two, but like some people are calling it a masterpiece. I don't know if I'd say all that, but it was really, really fucking good. I yeah. Heard I, it. Uh, I was just, just I, go ahead. I, 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 <laughs> no, I was just saying, I think your use of the word under underrated here is kind of uh that's kind of a jump. This show is very, very highly praised and well regarded. So a lot of it, people it, giving it, it tens, you know? Yes, yeah. I mean, it, it's, I don't think, I still don't think it gets enough attention. I, I hear what you guys are saying, but after watching those two seasons back to back, uh, the storytelling, it, as far as recent anime goes, is only rivaled by a couple of shows. Uh, the, choreo the fight choreography is, is amazing, but then like season two, it gets some heavy into philosophy, and we don't see a lot of anime do that. It takes a break from the fighting, which I was at first disappointed in, and I was like, what are they going to do? And then it really, really slowed down. And I was like, I'm not sure about this. And then maybe the last seven or eight episodes, nine or 10 episodes, I'm going to say, um, because it was a 26 episode season. Um, it really brought forth a lot more plot points. It got deeper. It, it gave you a deeper connection to the characters. I think a lot of the first season, I was really frustrated with Thorfinn about how he was acting and how he was going about getting his revenge. Um, but then he, he, he kind of like loses that. And he gains a whole new way of living. You know, he goes from a broken man to one that's very fucking resolute. And man, I, I just, I finished it. I actually finished this yesterday, last night uh, for the show. I had been watching it, but I kind of fell off with the vacation and all the stuff I got going on. Buying the house, y'all. It's fucking stressful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but please go check this out. It's, it has an 8.8. 8. Uh, this season, standing by itself, I'd give it a high 8, low 9. Uh, a lot of people are giving it tens, which I can all I could see why they do that, but the middle portion of it was very very slow, and I think they could have cut out probably three or four episodes from it. I think they, I think I've seen a lot of people saying it felt more slice of lifey. Would that be a correct uh, uh, way to describe it? I, I could I could definitely hear that honestly. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, there's almost no fighting. Uh, they're just kind of going about their day to day lives and kind of figuring out ways out of situations and like. You know, what's next? What are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to get out of the situation? And uh, and then, like, I also said the first time we reviewed this that it's like Game of Thrones, where it jumps around to different people. And it didn't do that as much, but it definitely kept up with the plot and the storytelling. And it's just, it, it blew me out of the water, man. Okay. Well, um, I guess I'll get into my uh, first uh, favorite of spring, top three. And it's going to be Oshinoko. Uh, I'm sure y'all have heard me talk about it a lot on this show and Twitter and all that good stuff. Um, I really ship it high. Uh, it's rated uh, 8.87 on Mal. It finally came down. So uh, after being <laughs> what up. What was it at? Up, like oh, it was number had... one for a while. So okay. Yeah, it was the most blown out of proportion thing I've ever seen in my life. They had it above <laughs> Full Metal Brotherhood, dude. I'm like, nah. Was... Like nine point, it was like nine point uh ten fifteen or something like that, and oh, like damn. I said, it it didn't come down a lot, you know, but it still came down, you know, enough to drop it down into like the fifteens twenties of Mal. So okay. yeah, and going off that too, I'm sure the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Attack on Titan fanboys went in and plagued it. I mean, Mall is a yeah. crapshoot, like. You have to take half these ratings with a grain of salt because, like, you really do. If something passes those two shows, the, <laughs> the fans are so insane. They go on Reddits and get people to crowd spam bad ratings. <laughs> like, it's actually insane. It's, it's a little <laughs> fucked. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I couldn't imagine many shows uh, being better than uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Straight but up. This is basically um, a reincarnation uh, scene. With idol themes, and basically, uh, it's eleven episodes. Of the first episode being like forty-five minutes long, or something like that. It's like really long. It's a couple episodes in one, and it basically follows a doctor that was murdered, 
and his recently deceased cancer patient who was reborn as twins to a famous idol. And it shows them navigating like the highs and lows of uh, Japan's entertainment industry as they grow up and live their lives. Um, obviously, I'm leaving out a some really big plot points that happen in the first episode um, um, because they are huge spoilers. Uh, there's a reason why the first episode that was 45 minutes long uh, is being touted as like one of the ar- arguably one of the best uh, first uh, episodes in anime history. So. Uh, because of just the roller coaster it gives you, and it just it's just so good. Uh, but have y'all ever thought about checking that out, or is it is it not, not up y'all's not my alley? cup of tea? And yeah. I I heard something really kind of messed up about this show. I think it was episode it was- six, where they actually took a real life suicide scenario and basically like copped it up word for word like they're using the same cyberbullying like messages and stuff like that in the show that happened in real life and it, it like fucked up the mother of whose daughter passed away so i don't know if i'm watching this one that was really fucked up that, well, that, that is fucked up yeah you gotta ask for permission on that shit dude yeah so that that is uh pretty messed up but they did that i didn't see that but that episode did get a lot of heat because they did it you know um very uh it, it portrayed like real life very well and now it makes sense and you know the aftermath of that was uh i think they 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 showed it pretty well of what you actually should do maybe or try to do in order to help someone that's going through that so um but all that was like um uh done because a reality TV show, a reality dating show, uh, wanted to paint her to be uh, like that. And that's why she was in that situation is because because of content, basically. It's yeah, like, it was- it's actually it shows it, it's wild that it shows how the idol industry and entertainment industry is like in real. This is the way it is in real life, you know? Yeah, so I, it's wild I just- that they actually show that. So. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's crazy they show that, but if I think you're going to take a pretty, wor- like, word for word scenario of something that happened to someone's family in real life, you should, uh, no, ask I didn't know permission, that. I guess. Bro. Yeah, no, like, yeah, it was yeah, a really big ask. deal. It was a really big deal in Japan. And, like, uh, the mother came out against the show, uh, basically because of it in the, the mangaka, and all the Oshinoko fans were basically cyberlowing the mother after the fact. Oh, come and, on. Yeah, it, it was really, it was a really shitty scenario. So I don't know about watching the show for me. Like, that just left a really bad taste in my mouth. You should never, ever do that to anybody. That That's so unfair no. to you. And uh, I just don't think it's up my alley. I don't, I, idle, idle shit's fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, I just like the way it, it does the twist on it, you know, um, where okay. it's, it's not, like, you think idle, you think, you know, just singing and stuff, but it's actually, like, we're seeing more behind the scenes of what idle people go through like oh yeah how they got, look it, got at, it you know and like it, it really shows the dark side of the idol industry because I, what i'm not mentioning the doctor and the cancer patient you know um they they, they got a are cancer like patient too god damn yeah well that's <laughs> they both died and they was both really big fans of you know this uh really famous idol uh called uh ai i you know and um uh, they was like like super fans. Like you would almost say that they was. I wouldn't say stalker, but like maybe. But they actually That's, got yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, the doctor actually gets you know uh killed by the stalker, uh, uh AI stalker, and that's how he got reincarnated um as her twin. Uh, as one of her twins. So like it's. It's, it brings these super fans and makes them her babies, it, which is another like uh, weird, hey, yo. unique thing. So okay, yeah, uh, okay. But I mean, I it, like going off what Tyler was saying though. I mean, if you think about like, is there any actor or actress from Disney Channel who turned out normal? No, no. <laughs> and we don't thing, see you know? that. You know, we we don't see well, that. We, we only see what 
we we see on TV. Well, was, and, we see the aftermath of it yeah. when they're all over the news for, I mean, Britney Spears shaving her head and everything and else. Right? Stars, Orlo, you know? Orlando Brown is certified crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's a fucked up thing, you know, putting kids through all that. But um, no, what about the dollars? Dan? I've, I've heard what nothing. About the but, dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard nothing about, but good things about the show besides that one little hiccup. Um, and I think it's interesting that, you know, they are portraying that darker side of the entertainment industry. So I definitely see the appeal to it. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's other things going on that I'm not hitting on, but yeah, uh, cause of spoiler reasons, but, um, that's about all I got for it. Uh, if, if y'all want to take a chance on like a, uh, a pretty good show that's only 11 episodes, then, you know, might as well, uh, like Dan said, episode six, that was pretty messed up. I didn't, I didn't even know about that. So, but GG's to that. Yeah, definitely. Well, I will get it a little lighter than that conversation with uh, flying <laughs> anime titty pillows and sex drugs and rock and roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a show that I, uh, it's a really good B tier anime in my opinion, but I, fu- it was really fun. Uh, so I got Magical Destroyers as my first show I'm going to talk about. Uh, the mal rating is actually only a six point three nine. Like it's it's not nothing like to write home about, but it was really fun. Uh, so basically, the plot goes like in two thousand eight, there was a change in the Japanese government where they wanted to cancel otaku culture across the country because it's poison. And um, so basically, they're capturing all the otaku's throughout the entire country and putting them in like these internment camps. So, like, all of us would be fucked. I mean, I got a bunch of random video game and anime shit on this shelf. Hey, Tyler's got One Piece stuff in the background. Like, we're all, we're all going to an internment camp. <laughs> I am a taco hero, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> there was an organism, a rebellion that rose led by Otaku Hero. And basically, they're just creating a resistance army to basically put all these displaced geeks together to, you know, continue embracing their culture and hide from the government, everything like that. Uh, three years later, the fires of the rebellion are waning. All hope seems lost for the otakus. And all of a sudden, three magical girls appear in front of our boy otaku hero. Anarchy, blue, and pink. Okay. So basically <laughs> after that, the rebellion gets a kickstart and they start trying to fight the SEC, which is the organization behind all of this. So my thoughts are that the show is hilarious. It's really fun, but it's also really dark. Um, the show is just fucking unhinged. There's no other way to explain it. Like this is off the off the fucking ch- <laughs> chain, like insane. It's okay. super fun though. Um, so I love the parallel between the three characters: are Anarchy, Blue, and Pink are the three magical girls, and they parallel the classic sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Anarchy is an anarchist. She loves you know like that kind of vibe. That makes um, sense. I mean, follow, Blue, I follow that. Blue's just horny as shit. Like she's got scenes with a ball gag in her mouth. Like she's like wants to get tied up. Like all this. Sir. <laughs> Sir. Big fan. And then Pink Big fan. <laughs> he tried to slip that shit in there. You heard Big that fan. shit, Tyler. Big fan. Big fan. No, I'm Blue's great. She's probably, too, my, bro. she's probably my favorite character because of how wild she is. Okay. And okay. then Pink loves drugs. There's a ba, 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 ba. gobo 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 yeah. she can't talk she just says gobo <laughs> and blue translates everything she says <laughs> she's off the sands again but like there's a scene when they go f- try and bring uh pink back to like the resistance army and they all end up tripping balls and going inside of pink's mind and it's just a fucking roller coaster of who knows what it's like an acid trip um it's just it's a really fun show so do you uh, think so do you think that blue can translate what pink says because blue knows how to has talked a lot with a ball gag in her mouth? That could be that's a very Ooh. feasible point here. Ooh. I think it's I think it's just that magical girl connection though, you know. <laughs> see see I, I think it's like so you know like when uh you talk to like a toddler, like somebody that's like two or like three and like they can't quite talk, but their parents understand everything they're saying. Because they've just been around them so much. I think it's probably one of those situations. Oh, no. I mean, pink will be like, gobo, 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 gobo. And then blue will be like, go rattle off a perfectly like fluent sentence. See? Yeah, it's just like that. It's the same thing. Why can't Anarchy know what's up, though? I don't know. 
Because she ain't got that ball gag, bro. <laughs> but uh, the ending of it was really unexpected. Uh, I don't think Tyler's finished it yet. So the ending, uh, like my jaw hit the floor. I was like, holy shit, this is nuts. And uh, crazy plot twist, which is super fun. And it got renewed for season two. So we're going to pick up right where it left off. I'm not sure when yet, but I'm pretty excited to watch. It was a really fun show. If you're just looking for a crapshoot to watch, it's like mm-hmm. 12 or 13 episodes. Definitely recommend. It's bingeable in a weekend and it's just super fun. I mean, the fact that they're using uh, anime body pillows as weapons is top tier fucking comedy, in my opinion. I, I, I follow that, yeah. The, uh, I'm pretty sure the intro and outro are kind of like unique and uh, they're like wild too, right? Yeah, the, the intro is fucking nuts. Um, there's like scenes where like it starts glitching out and you see like actual videos of a cat and like all this other stuff and it's it's really bizarre. Okay. Yeah. Really <laughs> bizarre. Might but, have to go fuck with it. Might have to go fuck with it. You know, expand my horizons is damn. You know, we'll, if we'll you say. wanted to get into Magical Girls, like you talked about Sailor Moon. This is the show? Way, this is way it? better. Yeah. Okay. This is, okay. This is Magical Girls for adults. Big bet. Yeah. Um, I'm giving it like a 6.3. You know, I, I, it wasn't anything to write home about, but it was a super solid B-tier anime and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I awesome. think uh, I'm giving it like a solid seven out of like I've watched a little over half of it, so so far I got about a solid seven. So okay, okay, I'm well, harsher I, than Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the most harsh uh, uh, critic on the show. I so am. Far. Yeah, yeah. I don't sure. have a, I don't have a single ten in my book. <laughs> there we go. I only okay. got one. I think so. <laughs> I don't think I have a ten. I don't think I have a 10, but I got some, I got a couple that are close. Uh, so guys, this is the part of the, the show where I beat a dead horse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't watch many shows outside of our rundown. Uh, my aforementioned activities outside of, out of, outside of this podcast have kept me uh, away from the TV a uh, little more than what I would like, to be honest with you boys. Uh, but my, my, one of my favorites from spring was hell paradise. Uh, this is truly underrated. Um, on Malata 8.18, 13 episode season. We covered it, so I'm not going to go through uh, and explain it to you guys again. But uh, some things that I love, and I said them last episode, uh, was the great world building, uh, storytelling, and, and there was never a single dull episode. Like, I can't think of one where I was like, you know what? It really just wasn't hitting this episode. Um, Maybe one, but you know, I'm gonna say zero for the story. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that the one that was kind of dull was slow paced, but not because it just didn't have any action, but it built the world out really well. So, like, right, you have to have that, you gotta have that. Um, and extremely good pacing. Uh, th- there were some clean ass fights. I-, I listed a few. I mean, we're talking about 13 episodes, there were probably five or six really good fights, but I'm gonna list three of my favorites uh, Gabi Mara versus Yujin. Uh, the first fight we saw against a Tencent where he just straight up boxed the motherfucker up. I don't think Dan was here when, when me and Tyler talked about that one. Um, then you have Gabi Maro and Sagiri versus the giant of Benin, um, where they kind of bent him over and, and got at the back of his neck. Pause. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and then lastly, I mean, it was the last uh, couple episodes of the season. It was Shion, Yuzuriha, Senta, Sagiri versus Mudan. Um, <clears throat> All of those were had great choreography. Um, there, I'm a big, I'm big when it comes to choreography. I grew up, you know, kind of watching Naruto, which has some of the best choreography as far as fight scenes there is. Period. Um, so I always look for that when there's something that's mainly about fighting. Um, and they left us with so many good mysteries, man. As you know, you know what's going to happen to the when the rest of the Yamada clan members show up? Are the ninjas still coming, or were they bullshitting about that? Is the elixir of life and Gabby Marl's wife real? Uh, <laughs> what's happening to Gar- Gabby Maro's mind? You know what I'm saying? What are the other side effects of Tao um, and the drawbacks of it? And you know what are what are the what are the characters going to do with Tao as they learn how to properly use it? Because they're all in the beginning stages of learning it, and it kind of seemed to me that there were like two different power systems um, within the show, which you don't get to see a lot. I mean, uh, yeah, Yuzuriha had some handle on her Tao, but the, it, it seemed like there were some other things going on. And um, just having to look up uh, some of this show for you guys to explain some things on, 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 you know, as we as we speak, I've learned a couple more things that I probably shouldn't know at this point. But there's some <laughs> more things coming. <laughs> um, and I, I touched on the slander uh, of this show 
And I, you know, after I thought about it for a couple of weeks, it's, it's, it's kind of understandable because this was made by Mappa and we didn't get to see that a plus plus animation from this show, but it was still really good. Um, it did what it needed to do. It served its purpose, but I'm really hoping that they kind of like uh, pick it up for the second season. Since I think it was overall well-received. And if you're going to criticize this show for anything, I guess it could be that that's maybe the weakest part, but it was still strong. And that's how I, that's why I think it's underrated. Uh, when you're picking up the animation, which was good as the worst part of it, what does that say about the rest of the show? Um, and like, you know, when I'm looking at animation and, and the level of it, it's like, you know, does, does it take away from the show or not? And it definitely didn't for me. There were some very beautiful moments, but I think, you know, they, they got some, they got somewhere to go with it. And I'm very, very excited for the second season already. Well, the second core of the first season. That's all for me. I'm not going to beat the dead horse too much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess I'll get into my second one. And it's, I'm not sure if I've talked about this a whole lot on the podcast, but it's uh, my love story with Yamada at level 999. So, nine, nine, nine. damn, yeah, homie's strong. Yeah. yeah, this dude is strong. Um, Obviously, we're talking about like in a like a MMO called uh, Forest of Savior. Uh, I'm gonna give this show um, like a 8.5. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if I rated my last show Oshinoko. I think it was. Uh, I'm 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 gonna say like a high eight on that, low nine. I'm not okay. sure if I rated it or not. I might have just rambled on. So. Are we rating ours? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, I've been dropping ratings. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. Let me let me let me squeeze these motherfuckers <laughs> in then. Uh, Villain Saga season two, eight point nine, goat shit. Uh, oh, Hell's yeah. Paradise season one, <sighs> ah, eight point nine. I'm not gonna give it a nine, but it's eight point nine. Uh, okay, if they get the animation nah. together, I, I, yeah, I'm this shit was dope, dog. Yeah, it was. I was gonna put it on my list until you said you were doing it, so I didn't do it. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> you, dog. I didn't watch that much anime this last few months. Um, <laughs> But yeah, okay, go ahead, Tyler. Sorry, I had to squeeze that in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I totally forgot to rate mine last time. So, um, GG's. Uh, but yeah, um, with my love story of Yamada at level 999, the Mal is setting around like a 7.86. I'm going to hit it like an 8.5, like I said. 13 episodes. It's like a romance um, with uh, gamer themes. So Interesting, okay. Yeah. SAO, gotcha. Yeah, well, no, they they uh, they don't really get like trapped in there, you know. It's just that's uh, only one season, though. Yeah, well, I don't think that it's gonna go that route. So, um, but anyways, no, uh, Sao, they only trapped oh, in the yeah. game for one season. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's it's sort of the same premise, except like I said, they don't get trapped in there, but they do go into that you know field of uh, force the savior uh, game and like. Uh, like interact with each other in their like game versions, which is really cute, you know. Uh, but this this we follow a- a- Akane, which is the uh, female main character, as she's struggling to get over a recent breakup and scheming to get back at her ex. She plans to go to a Force of Savior, the MMO that I was talking about event. Um, that they actually used to play together. Her uh, boyfriend got her into this game, and they started playing together. And then he dumped her for another girl that played Forest the Savior too. So she got dumped <laughs> for somebody in the game. You know, damn, uh, heartless. Yeah, uh, so, absolutely brutal. <laughs> so she she plans on getting back at her ex at this uh, convention or event for this Forest the Savior game. And she actually runs into a member of her new guild there because obviously she joined a guild, another guild that her boyfriend wasn't in. And she runs into a member of her new guild there and asks him to pretend that he is her boyfriend and to make her ex jealous because he sees her, he sees him there with his new girl, you know. So obviously she wants to make him a little bit jealous, you know. Hey, look, I'm with this you know, pretty hot guy, you know, but he don't I know that she's just mad at him, so, yeah. yeah. She's at level 999 now. But, what <laughs> she doesn't know is that Yamada 
which is the dude that is in her guild and that she randomly come across and, you know, got a, got him in this situation. He's actually a very famous um, uh, professional gamer that plays like FPS games. And, you know, he's obviously level 999 in Force the Savior. So, like, he's a, like a gamer gamer, you know. Mm-hmm. And the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend is just like, no way, bro. That's Yamada, you know, <laughs> and it's like uh, it works, you know. She she don't understand the hop around Yamada, but uh, her plan works. So that's cool. But, yeah, so we just basically follow their interactions, her interactions with the new guild, and there's like a lot of cute moments. And um, uh, Yamada is basically like your stoic. Um, uh, not really sure how to interact with uh, females and other people um, because all he does is play games. You know, he's just your normal gamer. You know, he don't really know how to uh, let his emotions out and have normal conversations and stuff like that. So, but it, we just followed that uh, whole storyline and and it was like a underrated show at the beginning. And then... Um, I was telling the boys that, you know, I had Skip and Loafer over like pretty high at the top, uh, at the beginning of the spring season and my love story Yamada just like overtook it about halfway through the season and stayed there. Like it, it was just that good. So, but yeah. Nice. Nice. Sounds like another show I wouldn't watch. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's being the, brutal. Akane no, is I just, I'm not a, a romance guy, I'm just dude. fucking with you, dude. Well, you 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 were saying kind of, you know, you wanted uh like grown more grown up top things. Connie's actually in college. Um, she's like a first year in college, so she's a little bit older. And I think Yamada is in the last year of high school, which kind of got some flack. But I think they're only a year apart, so that's like, fine. You know, and he's a gamer, so like I I feel like. You know, there's a lot of relatable could, things. So. Yeah, this is one. I mean, I like to say, yeah. oh, it's probably kind of similar in the storytelling. So I could probably enjoy this. It's got a lot of funny uh, moments, too. Like, I find myself laughing because they do that little uh, uh, weird uh, art style, like the fluffy faces and, you know, uh, kind of like uh, Full Metal does, I think, roughly. Oh, okay. So, all right. Like all right. Chibi style or whatever you want to call it. So nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. Sweet. So my next show on the list, which is probably, I'm going to say my favorite show of Spring 23 is uh, Tengoku Daimakyo or Heavenly Delusion. Uh, This is a Hulu exclusive. So if you got Hulu, I 1000% recommend you check out this show. Uh, On Mal, it's got an 8.23. So the plot basically goes 15 years ago, disaster struck human civilization and now dangerous man-eating monsters roam the ravaged lands, posing an existential threat to the remaining survivors. Among this turmoil, an isolated facility shelters children and nurtures them in peace. However, as a few among them find out about the world beyond, the narrow periphery of their nursery walls, the curiosity about it starts to grow. Meanwhile, in the outside world, young survivors Maru and Kiriko band together to search for a special place called Heaven, each for their own reasons. Carrying past burdens and tragic secrets, the two hope to find answers to the cruelty that they have experienced in their lives and in the world, which remains in tatters. So this is potentially like one of the most captivating and like mysterious anime I've ever watched. Um, it's, a, it's a fucking roller coaster. It's so fucking good. Like it, the <laughs> storytelling is incredible. I mean, I know Tyler, I haven't finished it yet, right? Yeah, I have finished it, so. <sighs> it's a banger, dude. Yeah. It uh it it's leaves you with a lot of like a lot of questions. Um like every episode you're left with like a lot of questions just because everything they do is like unconventional, I th- I feel like. So Oh, definitely. I mean the interactions between the two main characters, Maru and Kiriko, are awesome. Uh the monsters they fight are fucking terrifying. I mean, this is <laughs> like it's some pretty terrifying shit. I mean, um for some reason, Kuriko has uh, the Kiro beam, or whatever they call it, which is her <laughs> gun that can take these things down. But like, they spent half the time trying to find somewhere to charge the batteries for this gun. <laughs> yeah, the Kiro oh, beam. Yeah. 
<laughs> you'll see, yeah, the Kiru beam. And you'll see where like she goes to shoot the monster and it just shoots a dud and she's like, oh, I'm out of charge and they're fucked. <laughs> but they, uh, they keep on staying fun. in it. They keep on staying in it. They're like, uh, even though it's charged, it's still like a 50-50 shot if it actually works. So they rely on it heavily. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the plot is kind of confusing. Uh, there was a couple of scenes I had to rewatch to really understand what was going on. But that doesn't take away from the story. The story is so captivating. Um, the story of the children in this facility is fucking wild. Like the whole story is just insane. And I definitely recommend you check it out if you like like psychological horror thriller kind of movies. This is right up your alley. Um, and I'm giving this one an eight point two. So that that is a fucking gas Daniel rating right there. Okay. 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 Yeah. And it, it's gonna hit like a low eight for me too. So. Very top good. Notch. Very top good. notch. Okay. Um, so back to the dead horse with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do one piece, uh, but you know, this is a continuous anime. Uh, so I'm just going to do with like, I guess we would call the spring season with 1055 to 1068. Um, holy fuck guys, dudes, dudes. They, we had <laughs> some of the best one piece episodes ever, at least to me in the last 15, 13 episodes, honestly. Um, just to give you guys a quick recap, 1056, we saw the fight between uh, Law Kid and, and Big Mom start heating up. We got that great screenshot with all the different uh, the pretty colors and auras. Uh, they, they It got to the point where they were actually doing a good job with them. I was ragging on them when we first started this show um, about how it just looked like DBC with a bunch of yelling in, in colors. <laughs> um, and then you come back a few episodes later, uh, with 1060, and we got some uh, Zoro backstory where it, you know it goes back to the East Blue in his home, and we got some Inma backstory as well. Uh, I thought that was pretty gas. And then uh, <clears throat> we they brought some... up they brought up my favorite One Piece villain. Who that? Down these stairs. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he just said that. <laughs> Um, and then we got Sanjay defeating Queen, which was, I mean, uh, that one was called Strike of an Ifrit, uh, episode 1061. Uh, come on, boys. Come on, boys. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> and then we had Zoro defeating uh, King in uh, 1062. Some people were saying that was one of the best anime fights, period. Like, ever. Um, I don't know if I can disagree with that, honestly. You can't. Yeah, I, can, I don't know if I can fucking disagree it's, with that shit. It's top 10 for sure. Yeah, oh, easily top 10. Um, and uh, wow. Uh, the, the animation during that, the, even the sounds where I was impressed. Uh, I, I do value sound when it comes to anime. Like Fire Force has some of the best uh, sounds. And, and this, the audio was crisp. It was very crisp. It felt heavy. Um and then we also got that King and Kaido backstory. I always, that, I mean, I mean, One Piece always does a great, great job with that. And then they, they, they hit, hit another bang with that. And then with some comic relief in episode 1062 with uh, the drunken dragon uh, Bauga and um, Kaido just crying and having his fucking mood swings was, was, it was fucking hilarious. We, I think we <laughs> needed that in the show at the time too, because we just got so many good fights. There was a lot of heavy backstory. Um, Sanji was just worried about his whole demeanor changing and his, his, his heart being uh, taken over. Um, and then after that, you know, we got 1066 and 1067, which included my favorite sequence from Law with him kind of like moving around using his devil fruit in room so much. I had been waiting for him to do something like that since I'd seen his power uh, years and years ago at this point. Um, so I was I was really impressed with it. And yeah. uh Shout out to Henry though. Like he done he done a banger episode a banger job on that episode, making yeah. making that sequence, you know. Yeah, our American boy really showed up for us right there. Um he earned his spot to direct that episode and he definitely, definitely, you know, earned his stripes right there. And uh one thing I do want to say, uh, it used to be when I was first watching One Piece, um, you know, I think it's several years ago at this point. Damn, I'm getting old. Um, <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> it used to be my favorite episodes were like when the straw heads weren't in the middle of any battles. They were just kind of riding around being novice pirates, uh, trying to figure out what they're going to eat or where the fuck, the fuck they're going, trying to you know figure out their log posts and whatnot. And now we, like, we get to see them be 
you know, like these A plus top tier, you know, world government challenging pirates. And for a long time, I was scared that I was losing that uh, because I said that, you know, like I said, that, that's my, that was my favorite part of the show. And they've transitioned so flawlessly to what it is now. It's, I think it's changed a lot, but it's still great. Um, I don't think there's many other shows that could pull that off uh, that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and, but it still, it, it never lost itself. It changed, but it was still to its core, the same thing. Um, I'm going to try to put a fucking rating on this man. Uh, just, just the spring, uh, portion of one piece. Yeah. From 1066 to 1068. Um, with it, with it having some of the best fights of the show, um, I don't. I can't really rate it lower than Vinland Saga and Hell's Paradise. I, I just like out of, out of respect. I can't do that. That'd be pretty bad if you did, dude. Yeah, the, no. I, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I'm gonna have these last 13 episodes. I'm gonna have to give them a nine four. Um, that's that's probably the highest rating you're gonna see me give anything on this show, at least for you know the time being. Until but, next season. <laughs> I we'll see, dog. I don't know exactly what's coming, but we'll see. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna find out, buddy. <laughs> um, but I mean, it just had it just it was so good. It was so good. The 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 story deepened. We, we're starting to figure some things out. Uh, I I kind of do know what's coming, to be honest with you, boys. Uh, but yeah, that, if you l- don't live on. under a rock, you know what's coming. Yeah, but come on, like it was it was. This is some of the best one piece I've seen in a long ass time. Yeah, I mean, like, One Piece for me is probably, like, a 9.1, and this was, like, a 9.4, 9.5, so I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, least, you, it, anything least. less than a nod is fucking disrespect for what they've been doing lately. Cool. Yeah. Um, All right, Tyler, you want to get us to your last one? Yes, sir. Uh, my last one is Skip and Loafer, or Skip the Loafer. Uh, it can be translated either way, I think. Um, I'm going to give it a low 8, and that is basically on par with Mal. With it setting at like an 8.16. It's a 12 episode uh, signing romance. Um, what does that mean? Uh, signing is like for older, older uh, audience, you know? Okay. Yeah. So it's like, like Shonen and Shoujo. Shonen and Sending or Signing yeah. or whatever it is. Got it. And got it. yeah, it's just for your like uh, older, I would say teens, honestly, like a 16 to 16 plus, probably, if you wanted to rate it something. So. Um, uh, but anyways, we followed the lives and like relationships of two first years, um, uh, Mitsumi, which is a small town girl with big dreams of getting into the political field in hopes of helping her community in the future. I so thought you were going to say big tits. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting for it. You ain't got it like that, you know? So shame sorry sorry <laughs> i crossed this one off my list <laughs> well, you probably wouldn't like it anyways so uh it's, it's not an insomniac's top you know what i mean so uh but basically she wants to she's from the country you know a small country uh side uh community and she goes to um the big city and a, a prestigious school at that. So she's done with like the old country school and she's going to a high class prestigious school now in the big city, which is like hours and hours away from home. So she's struggling to adjust, you know, to that kind of pace, especially living out in the middle of nowhere, you know, how her dialect is different. Like she's struggling all around, uh, to, you know, be, get accomplishments done um in her dreams of being getting into the political field uh she wants to be like you know student council you know she wants to be like uh move up the ranks of that and she just finds it hard to do all that so but she also meets shima there um a friendly first year uh guy and he's also got some struggles going on um mostly with his past and he, like his old friends from uh, like elementary school or uh, whatever it is in Japan that you would call that. Um, uh, But uh, like he was a famous child actor when he was younger and he's tried to hide that away and get away from that. And that way he can forget about it because things took a turn for the worst. Um, um, 
and stuff like that. I'm not we're really not sure why, but like it hit on it a little bit, and he's just struggling with all that. And they meet each other, and he's more like the carefree, laid back, uh, with a dark side past, you know that mystery that we don't really know about and sh- and mid to me is like you're happy go lucky nervous about stuff uh writes in a notebook type shit you know so it's just their relationship together um i really enjoyed it it was like a a chill vibe um happy sunshine type shit you know what i mean so nice and that's all i got for it cool, what, cool, are you, cool, uh, cool. what are you uh what are you it was a it was a low eight Okay. So right on par with what Mal thought. So Okay, sweet. And my last show is it's it's Gundam. It's gotta be Gundam. I'm the Gundam guy. <laughs> uh so my last show I really enjoyed from the season is Witch from Mercury Part Two. Um I didn't really vibe with the first season this too much, but they just cranked it up to eleven and brought a lot of the Gundam things I know and love back into it. Mm-hmm. So uh basically the the season picks up where season one or part one left off. I don't know what the hell they're calling it. Um so there was a, like a brutal terrorist attack at one of the plants where they build the mechas. And uh, that left, uh, there's two main characters. There's a bunch, but the two main ones are Miorne and Suleta. And Miorne's father was like the CEO of this massive conglomerate of, you know, uh, mobile suit manufacturers. And he was injured in it, like basically dying. So she was at there. So that he goes back to school, is in a duel, and all of a sudden... There's a terrorist attack. Uh, two members of the Donna Fold, which is a terrorist organization, uh, infiltrated the school and basically blew up one of these duels and started just killing students left and right, destroying buildings, you know, like good old Gundam, like I loved it. Um, and there was a big point of this. Uh, Suleta's mother, Prospera, is actually trying to do this crazy ass thing called Quiet Zero, which is going to like... I don't want to get into too much details, but basically it's going to end all wars, according to her. And she recruits Miorne to basically make this happen. Um, the first season, like I said, it didn't really feel like a Gundam. It felt more slice of lifey with like Gundam fights thrown in here and there. Uh-huh. But uh, they really turned it up in the second season. The pacing was fantastic. The episodes flowed really well. Uh, the only thing I didn't really like is they like brushed on the political side of Gundam, which is really important usually. Yes, but they didn't dive into it too much. So I would have really? liked to see a little more of that. Yeah, they talked about the strife between space and Earth and, you know. That's usually, like, one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in Gundam. Yeah, it is the key plot. But they kind yeah. of they brushed on it. They didn't go too much into it. So I was kind of like, eh, I want more of that. But the fucking Gundam fights were awesome. Like, they were top-notch. The duels were fantastic. Uh, one good. thing, One thing I loved about this is all the characters were super fleshed out by the end. And you saw a lot of, I don't want to say like betrayal or any of that, but you saw a lot of flipping sides, classic Gundam right there. Mm -hmm. You saw a lot of people really find who they are and their determination. So like that, Um, the ending could have been a little better. Um, The ending was good, but um, you know, it's Gundam. Somebody's supposed to die. That's just what happens. (laughs) (laughs) I got to agree with that. Spoiler, nobody dies. Shame. Oh, that's Uh, good. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh no i'm giving this uh mal had it at an 8.04 and i'm giving it a 7.3 uh it was the second season was really good and it it kind of picked up the first season and brought it to a higher level in my eyes so this is one of the mechas that uh uh dan and a few others have been trying to get me to watch because it is more slice of life uh i think i'm actually gonna try to watch it soon so they said something about a best girl being in it, some redhead. So I'm Suleta? down for that. Yeah, I didn't uh, think they were giving her best girl, but that's just my opinion. I mean, redheads. You know, I, I don't know. She's, she's no zero. She's my no man's zero got a weakness. Two. She's no zero <laughs> too. That's all I'm gonna say. Red, pink. You know, it's going down over here. So <laughs> awesome, sir. Well, guys, that... sir. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, moving on yes, moving on yes. moving on uh that's some of us just recapping some of our favorite th- shows from spring uh 23 so again if you guys had a show we haven't watched it or something like that jump in the discord let us know we'd love to check it out as long as it's not a romance for me but tyler would love to watch that yeah. and let me know bro <laughs> <laughs> so you got a romance with mechas and fighting i'll, I'll check that out <laughs> i did i was darling in the frogs i checked that one out that was great yeah i love that one so 
Awesome. Um, Tyler, you want to get us going on our next topic? Yeah, yeah. So our next topic is called Teach Us, Sensei. And this is basically um, uh, what it boils down to is our favorite life lessons that we have learned from anime. Uh, most anime have a theme or two and can be much deeper than they appear. So with us having watched so much anime, we have decided to open up and tell you what we've actually learned from these shows besides like boxing, you know, so uh, I guess y'all do y'all want me to go ahead and start with it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Knock it out, brother. So my themes is going to be more of a, like a lighthearted kind of themes um, from Mob Psycho 100. Y'all know I really like Mob Psycho and Reagan. So um, got a really big uh, uh, crush on them. I get the anime, so or Reagan, maybe, possibly. And neither sure, of them, sure this neither is a podcast. Of, <laughs> neither of them have red or pink hair, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, what, what's uh, happening? It's the personality, right bro. <laughs> Reagan. He fell in love with the personality. <laughs> I'm a shiesty ass motherfucker. <laughs> but basically, um, what I'm gonna say is, you know, mob mob kind of taught us that, like. Even even if you're like the strongest person in the world or even, you know, it can be it can be looked at a bunch of different ways. Strongest, smartest, you know, most athletic like you can look at if you're if you're the top dog, you know, the most richest um, or it would be richest. But uh, all this applies. But basically, just be humble. Always be humble and treat everyone kindly, you know. And Mob does a really good job at this because he he can, like, devour the world in one go. Like, he has the power to do it, and he doesn't. Like, he, he believes that he, yeah, he believes in not using his power, you know, unless he absolutely has to, Um a lot of people, you know, they want to like overuse their strengths um, that they have. That they're, you know, strong with like money, you know, smart. But you don't really have to do that, you know. Um, uh, I feel like most time you can get away with not doing it and live a better life. So if you're not, you know, trying to uh, treat people different and have a big ego, I guess you can say and stuff like that. So. And Mob definitely does not have a big ego. Like he's, if you if you looked at him, you'd be like, bro, this dude's just a weird kid who, uh, can't do anything. So basically, and he's just hiding it. So, um, but you you know you you basically never know what another person is going through, and uh, you know if you treat everyone you know nice and. Uh, kindly, you know, you can make someone's day, you know, pretty easily by doing it, it's, especially if they're going through a hard time. So, but and then we get on the other side of the uh spectrum over here with what Reagan teaches us, and it's fake it till you make it, baby. Well, <laughs> scam central. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's one thing I did learn from Reagan. Other than, you know, fake it till you make it and just, you know, bullshit your way out of everything. Uh, he really teaches you how to not fall for scams and pyramid schemes because he is the epitome of scams and pyramid schemes. So, uh, yeah. Fact I, I, check I, your peoples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's two pretty, uh, you know, Good life lessons, I thought, that uh, came out of Mob Psycho, which is a kind of more of a lighter, lighter anime. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting, too, because you said Mob taught us that. But a lot of those things are ideals that Reagan instilled in him, you know? Yeah, and true. Reagan was a great sensei to Mob, and you, you see it carry over in Mob's character. So, oh, 100%. I but, agree uh, with that. But some of some of them, you know, um, it was it was his ideals too, especially you know. Uh, but I think that Reagan kind of uh, made him believe that it was, uh, like himself. Like Reagan kind of made him believe that Reagan was telling him to do this stuff. But I think Mob 
was actually that way in the beginning. You know what I mean? Very Mob true. was just that type of person that, you know, needed someone to say, hey, you need to do this. Even though he was going to do it anyways, he still needed that person to say that usually. Yeah, so. definitely. Understood. Understood. Cool. So uh, my uh, favorite life lesson, um, I, I kind of learned from uh, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, way, way back in the day. Um, I don't remember where I actually originally saw this. Um, but to me, Cowboy Bebop is a tragedy about like the past and, 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 and existentialism, uh, which is like kind of the belief that, you know, you're responsible for creating your own purpose and like your own meaning in life. It's down to the individual. And I do think that's very important. And it's also, I think it's also about self liberation, which all of our characters don't succeed in doing in the show. Um, because, you know, the, the main characters, they're, the definition of a ragtag team. Um, but the thing that they have in common is that they are all, you know, frozen at one point in their, from their past, right? They focus on it. It's like a core part of their personality to themselves. And I think what Cowboy Bebop lets, you know, there's two, two things that it teaches us is like, you know, let go of the past, but don't run from it. You have to acknowledge it to be able to move on from it. And then the also thing, the other thing is like, you know, finding your own meaning in life and going back to my first point about letting go of the past, but not running for it. You know, it, a big, a big thing is like, you know, your past doesn't have to dev- define who you are. Um, and I think that's very true in real life. Uh, you know, what you did yesterday or years ago doesn't have to be who you are. You get to determine what you're going to be today. You can form new habits. Um, you can, you can be better. You can always be better. And that's something you should be striving for, you know, that's how I live my life. And, you know, but you do have to grow from your past. You have to acknowledge it first and say, you know, that never happened or, you know, uh, I didn't do that. Um, and we see Spike. He couldn't move beyond his own past. And he, he kind of put himself in a lot of danger and made his friends worry about him for that, for, uh, because of that. And then uh, with Jet, you know, his, his former girlfriend, uh, kind of like left them randomly and it, it was still weighing heavy on his mind um even like a, that was like seven years or a decade later and um uh, and in one episode like it kind of causes him to try to save her and she does and in the end it's really sad because she doesn't need saving she's like you know i have my own life uh i know what i'm doing and in the end like he kind of like wakes up and he because he's be able to move he's able to move like beyond that he starts living like a, a better life. And that's kind of where the anime ends for him. Um, but Faye is, is I think someone that almost everybody can identify with. If you, if you feel like you, you missed something in your past, something like, like that, and trying to find like a new meaning in your life. Um, and if you haven't seen the show, you know, throughout the whole series, like she's looking for her, for like she, her for, forgotten past. And, once she remembers where she's from, she finds enough c- clues to figure out where she's from physically. Um, and there's like a video uh, from her childhood and she was like a cheerleader. And she's like, Oh, I'm figuring out who I am. And then she goes back to that place and there's one person left and she's super old and she hardly remembers her, but there's nothing else there. And I think that kind of like set her free. And I think that's why you can't really focus too much on your past. You got to be looking at the horizon instead of behind your back. There's nothing back there. Um, You know, so she no longer has the search. So she's free now. She's free to determine what the rest of her life will be. She's looking forward and looking at the possibilities in her life. Um, Cowboy Bebop is a 26 episode anime. Um, And I think the reason it's so timeless to people is because it's, it's very, very, you can take a lot from it. It kind of portrays life as it is, you know, there's no real evils in a normal person's life. There's no real, 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 like pure good thing. It's just all gray or, or it can be gray. Um, so that's what I really like about it. You know, each episode is like its own journey, but it's teaching you the same thing over and over again, even with the main characters, the side characters. And I think it's beautiful that way. And I did learn a lot from it. And I, and I hope if you haven't watched it, you will, because it, it, it's wonderful. Uh, I know, Dan, you've watched it. You, I think both of you have watched it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, banger. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's it's a fucking masterpiece. It really I mean, is, it really is. 
Spock is one of my favorite characters of all time, bro. And and uh, uh, I, I'm forgetting Faye. You know, Faye is you know one batty. of the best girls. You know, she's a like like Dan just said, baddie, bro. Like <laughs> she's just a baddie. Uh, so I'm down with and Jed. He he's hard, bro. You know, he's he's hard as hell. He really he's is. Yeah, he's a fucking writer. Yeah, he's a yeah. fucking writer. So. But yeah, leave your past in the past, guys. Focus on your future, <laughs> goddamn. Time to move on. Yes, yes. You're not in high school <laughs> anymore, boys. <laughs> All right. Well, go uh, ahead, it's, dude. it's about to get a lot lighter. That was very deep, <laughs> and um, I didn't, uh, I didn't dive that deep into it. So I actually decided to pick uh, two shows from my childhood that I learned a lot from because you know I think that part of this has turned me into the person I am. So obviously I'm starting with Pokemon. Uh, the Pokemon anime was something I watched every fucking day as a kid. And even just playing the games, you know, you learn a lot about how to strategically approach situations. Um, one thing that I think that the recent Pokemon anime did really well is that it showed that you don't have to be the strongest to be the best. So we actually reviewed and recapped the fight of Ash versus Leon for the for all the marbles. Um, a couple m- last month? Uh, I don't I'm not sure. It, it seems like it was last month, but it could have been a month before, honestly. And if you want to check that out, it is on Netflix now. So they've added the entire f- rest of the season to Netflix. Oh, um, nice. Nice. So you, you can watch it not uh, in Canada like we did. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, if you watch like that, I think the fight with Leon and Ash just signifies this really well. Um, Obviously, Leon is a stronger trainer than Ash, but Ash thinks off his ass and does the craziest moves, like, you know, strategies and everything else to Mm -hmm. defeat Leon. So it's one of those things like you don't have to be the best, but the strongest, sorry, but to be the best, you need to approach life with strategy, find weaknesses and strengths in your enemies or your situation and kind of tackle that. So I think that's something that like you can carry on to a lot of things. I mean weaknesses and strengths is something that you should look at yourself for all the time and as funny as it is you know we've all got our type advantages and disadvantages so very so, true yeah I, it's just it's funny to think about because it's a kid show uh yeah, the next strategy is everything my guy definitely man so the next show i got just like pokemon you know throwback of throwbacks i got digimon <laughs> digital Whoa, monsters We're throwing it back boy <laughs> yo okay uh, so two big things uh, from that show that really just stood out to me. I mean, it's been a long ass time since I've watched the the adventures of the Digi Destined. But uh, facing your fears will help you grow. So if you ever get in an uncomfortable situation or a situation where you're afraid of the outcome, push through. See what's going to happen. It could be better for you. Um, and that's something you see every day in life. You know, if you're looking at getting a new job buying a house, anything like that, as you know, you guys are getting older, our young listeners or older listeners who have been through this. I mean, these are all things that help you grow as an individual. And then the other thing you really pick up from Digimon is teamwork, make the dream work, baby. You know, if those, it really does though. Yeah. I mean, if those kids didn't work together, they were all fucked. Big time. (laughs) (laughs) And you see it in some, I can't remember his name, but the, uh, the blonde boy, uh, you know, he's kind of like, I don't want to work with you guys. You know, you're all fucking whatever. Like, I'm going to go off my own. And then he comes back to the team after. And, you know, they they save the digital and the real world. So see that. And then finally, for my last ones, I have One Piece. Uh, the first lesson I've learned for One Piece is fuck the government. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey out to get you, regardless of it. Don't trust anybody. <laughs> and that the IRL One Piece it's your friends all along, everybody. That's that's my that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Hell yeah, dog. the whole show shit far. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I really got, man. I didn't dive too. I didn't. I did not do a deep dive into the existentialism of Pokemon and Digibond. So, <laughs> <laughs> bro, somebody's got to do it, bro. Somebody's got to do it. Did you? Hey, uh, did. Did you see like in uh this is off topic a little bit, but um Gojo referencing Digimon? Did oh yeah. 
I was crying. <laughs> yes, yes, I did actually. So we can get him. We can let him get to Guru Mom, but he can't get to War Guru Mom. I was like, yes. I didn't really understand the reference, you know, because I didn't really watch Digimon. So okay, uh, so that's like you yeah. get to the second form, but you can't go all the way to the third form. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, I'm sure Dan is, you know, over there like pumping the air, you know. <laughs> Dude, if you want to talk fucking anime references in an anime just watch Gintama because it is fucking insane I've been getting so many snapchats from this man <laughs> and I've been enjoying them honestly I need to find some time to watch that shit there was one where it was like they're trying to think of things for season 2 and uh, one of the people literally is like we should make uh, Gintama was it uh, dragon bleach piece it is literally just ripping off yeah, one I saw piece, that shit, bleach, yeah. and Dragon Ball. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I mean, if I could have put that on my spring recap because I'm watching it in the spring, it would have been above every one of those shows. It's like a fucking 8.59 for me right now. It's so yeah. good. Okay. I mean, there's a reason why it's, you know, top 10 Mal, uh, you know, uh, of like they got so, Gintama has so many, uh, um series like uh seasons up there in like the top 10 top 15 of mal so it's it's oh, crazy it's incredible and it's still only a 4.3 aspect i'm like 60 episodes in i'm like i can't wait for widescreen <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a point in the show i guess because i googled when does it go to widescreen and they're like yeah from episode 100 to 150 they start making fun of the producers because they're still not in widescreen yet and i'm like that's so fucking Gintama. that's perfect that's, that's so really fucking they're, they're... <laughs> oh, dude, the whole show is like they know they're in an anime it's fucking fantastic so it takes 150 episodes to go to you know uh standard uh format now so yeah okay uh... yeah it takes a while but it doesn't take anything away from the show no I've I've watched plenty, bro, of uh, and like weird looking shit. So it yeah, is what it is. but awesome. Um, I think we're good here, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm done with my philosophy. So. Yeah. So I guess you know maybe uh, rate the podcast if y'all haven't. Um, we need some <laughs> more ratings. You know, let's do some self promo here before we end it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, rate the podcast, join the Discord, go like all our YouTube shorts and TikToks, and um, tell me I look pretty. Yeah, You look pretty, Dan. Thank you. you. Hawaii. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one. Well, guys, we appreciate you hanging out and listening to this week's Anime DJ's podcast. Hope you guys had a good time checking out the weekly rundown on Tuesday as well. If you didn't get a chance, go back and give it a listen. We're starting spring 2020 or summer 2023, and we're watching some bangers. Uh, Linktree.com slash anime G joins to check out our socials, join the Discord, and we'll catch you next Tuesday. All right, guys, peace. Later.